California. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, automobiles, places of business, or wherever you may be viewing us to let you know that it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. So you pull up a chair, gather your family and friends, like and share this page. Let everyone know that Pastor Moore and Church on the Rock are live. And for the next few moments, let's worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. We want to hear from you. You may give us a call at area code 408-532-ROCK or go to our website at www.churchontherockbaptist.com But let us know that this outreach ministry is a blessing to your life. Every now and then type amen, praise the Lord, sing hallelujah, thank you Jesus, go ahead, let us know you're out there. Well, don't you worry. Don't you fret. He's still God. And he's never failed us yet. And we will be all right someday. Oh, I'll be all right. Yes, we'll be all right. I'll be all right. Be all right. says, oh, clap your hands unto God. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's clap our hands for the people out there, letting them know that we're in here praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh. 
him, you believe him, and that whatever his will for your life is, it will be done. We want to join with you in prayer this morning, wherever you are all over the world. We are praying for you today, Sister Mary Ann Roberts, Naomi Smith, Norma Jean Roberts, Minister Mosey Hill and family, Renee Tyler, Brother Gary Altman, Fleeta Mae Bigsby in East Palo Alto, Willie Ed and Mary Helen Malone in Fort Worth, Texas, Sister Robin Brown Young, Sister Kelly Sue Collins in Columbus, Ohio, Kelton Waller, Harvey and Denise McGee Hoskins, Anne Lynn Sharon, Ashley Maurice, and Rodney McGee and family in Chicago, Janetta, Reginald, Whitney, and Micah Moore and family, the original Medea, Sister Johnny Kathy in Atlanta, Georgia. We are praying for you today. Linda, Lanisha, and Lonnie Gilmore, Jerome, Kathy, James and Deborah Garner and their entire family, Candice Romero, Jean Phillips and family in Jackson, Mississippi, Sister Mary L. Rice in South Haven, Mississippi, Bob Slater, Betty Stallworth Davis, Sister Victoria Baines in Las Vegas and her entire family, we are praying for you today. Mrs. Leola Nash and family, Ronald, Karen, and Santa Denise Jones in McDonough, Georgia. Good morning, family. How we miss you and we are praying for you today. Janetta Elliott. Roy and Sandra Johnson. Good to see Brother Johnson in the audience today. We are praying for you. Melissa Lawson. Marilyn Mariah Manuel. Thelma McGee Carver and family in Milwaukee. 
Lakeisha and Thea Bradley and family in Dallas. Priscilla White. Angela Venable and family in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sister Robin Calhoun. Brother Charles Calhoun. Star Crawford, Mary Jane and Pierre Larry. Jasmine Smith in Chicago. Mae Johnson in Houston. Pastor Larry Ellis. Pastor H.L. Davis, Jr. Pastor Charles Noble in Newark, Ohio. Mrs. Weta Davis in Detroit. Kirk and Jackie Ford Jackson. Marla Starrett. Don Rulis. Walter, Louise, Lynette, and Raquel Crawley in Chicago. Helen Jones in Hayward. Hope Richard in East Palo Alto. Sandra McNeil. Stephanie Gaines in San Francisco. Diane Miles in New Orleans. Sadie Tinsley. Carrie Creamer. Sister Brenda Ireland and family in Milwaukee. God bless you this morning. We are praying for you. We are praying for the Griffin family in Sacramento. Pastor Donald Parson, Ariel Crawford, Deacon Wilbur Butler, Catrice Joseph in Warner Robins, Georgia, Jacqueline Thomas Dorset in Los Banos, Robert and Lida Altman in San Francisco, Rhonda Eller, Jacqueline Marshall, Charles McNeil, Tom and Donna Arnold, Amia Evans in Houston, Sister Vicki Robinson and family in Sacramento, Minister Lewis Gordon, we are praying for you here at Church on the Rock, and Eric Jones in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are praying for all of those who are fighting COVID-19, all of those who have lost their jobs, and all frontline essential workers. Now this morning or whatever time it is where you are, if you are hurting in your body, I want you to lay your hand where you're hurting and together we're going to talk to God and ask him to heal you. And whatever else is going on with you, whatever sicknesses, whatever diseases, whatever issues of life you may have, this week, we're going to tell God, thank you, because your breakthrough is coming. Your miracle is coming if you just believe God today. Let's bow our heads in a moment of prayer as Brother Christian St. Laurent leads us to the throne of grace. We just want to say thank you, God, for being able to bow our heads and close our eyes to come to you, God, to come to your presence, to thanking you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, God. Thank you, God. Even though that is the Thanksgiving season, God, we just want to thank you all for all the many things that you've done for us all year long, for the, the, our whole entire lives, God. Thank you, God, for just waking us up another day, God. Thank you, God, for food on the table, clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet, God, all the necessities that we need, God, the things that we take for granted, God. We just want to say thank you, God, for that, because you didn't have to do it for us, God, but you have mercy and grace for us, and we're just ever so thankful for that, God. Thank you, God, for this church, God, a church that knows how to reach us, God, spiritually, God. Thank you, God, for this church who knows how to preach and pray, God. Thank you, God, for our pastor, God, who guides us to you, God. Thank you, God, for a real pastor, God, not just any pastor. Thank you, God, for transportation to get to and from our various destinations, God. Thank you, God, for a job, God, to be able to provide for our families, God. Thank you, God, for a roof over our heads, God. Thank you, God, to being able to pray unto you, God. Thank you, God, for just being by our sides, God, when there's nobody else around us, God. Thank you, God, for being the light in our darkness, God. Thank you, God, for just 
touching us, God, saving us, God, from our wicked ways. Thank you, God, for just giving us another chance, God, to do right and be right, to be closer to you, God. You always, you always come after us, God, whenever we distance ourselves from you, God. You always chase after us, God, and it just shows us how much you love us, God, and we're just so thank you, thankful for that, God. We have not lived up to the perfect example that you set for us in Jesus, and we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, God, and we just ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace, God. We ask for yes. your forgiveness, yes, God. Touch us, God. Make us more like your son, Jesus Christ, God. Just help us to set an example to this world, God, that you exist, that you are our Father, God, and that we follow you, God. So I just pray that you would just clean us up from the inside out. I pray for Church on the Rock. I pray for this church, God. Our vision, God, our dreams, God, we yes, lay it unto yes, you, God. Lord. Thank you, God, for what you have for us, God, but we pray for more. Even though that you put bless us with plenty, God, we are praying for $100 million for First Pass Ministry, take us to land and thousand new souls, God. We want to use this for your benefits, God. We want to be able to win souls unto you, God. We want to be able to show those out there in the world that you are our God, God, and that you created all of us, God, and that we should all follow you, God. So I just pray that you will bless us with those things. I pray for those that are sick and afflicted, God, those that are in hospitals, God. We just pray that you will just touch them, God, that you'll just make a way for them, God. They are leaning and depending on you, God, to make a way for them, God. So I just pray that for the sake, God, you know the body, you know what's going on with them, God. So I just pray that you will heal them, God. Not only for those that are sick and afflicted, God, but I pray for this church. I pray for Pastor Moore. I pray for his mother, God, who is still sick, God. I pray that you will heal her. I pray that you will just make a way for her, God. Yes, that you will yes, relax yes, um, Pastor Moore's um, worries and anxieties, God. Letting him know that you're right there with her, God. That you're, that you're right there with him, God. That everything will be all right, God, if you just put your trust in you, God. So I just pray for Pastor Moore. Not only for Pastor Moore, but... Everyone that is under the sound of my voice, God, this online yes, ministry, yes. God, whatever is going on in all of our lives, God, including myself, God, that you will just bless us, that you will keep us, God, that you will just calm us down, God, let us know that we're leaning and depending on you, God, that you got it, that you got it, God. We don't yes, need you. yes. You need our help, God. You are the help, God. So I just pray that you will just, we just all depend and lean on you, God. But I pray for those that are out there, those that are lost, God, those that are not saved, those that have are, are distant from you, God, those who have fallen short of you, God. I just pray that you will turn them to you, God. Turn them back to you, God. Bring them to you, God. I just pray that you will just save them, God. There is nobody in this world that you can't save. There's nobody in this world that you can't touch, God. So I just pray that you will just turn this world upside down, God. Show them that you exist. Show them that you love them, God. Show them that you want them to encourage them, God. Yes, I yes. just pray that you will say that we'll set an example for those out there, God. Use us so that we can win souls to you, God. Use us for your glory, God. Just thank you, God, once again for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Not for this Thanksgiving season, but for all year long, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. A mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Let me hear you say it one more time. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. You're watching Church on the Rock Baptist Live.
from San Jose, California on YouTube and Facebook. Like and share this page. Our music ministry is coming at this time to take us a little higher. Let's say amen and bless the Lord. Oh, we will 
St. Matthew chapter 15. I want to look at verses 21 through 28. St. Matthew chapter 15. I want to look at verses 21 through 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer, a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Turn around and look at your neighbor. Say, Christ's crumbs. Turn around and look at somebody else. Say, Pastor's going to talk about Christ's crumbs. God bless you today. For many of us, Thanksgiving Day is a great occasion. We look forward to coming together with family and friends to share a prayer, a meal, and maybe a football game or two. But the highlight of the day is always the meal. It doesn't matter if we enjoy it with family or friends, familiars or strangers. It's the viewing and chewing that gets our salivary glands going. And if you're like me, you will overindulge yourself on the abundance of delectable culinary treats plow through the main course and top it all off with sweet, sugary desserts that leave you gastronomically filled and emotionally satisfied. And when we have dined to our heart's content, when everyone has eaten as much as their stomachs can hold, inevitably there will be food left over. So we'll pile up the food on take-home plates for a nighttime treat, even if it causes nightmares. In the world of the culinary, there always seems to be leftovers. Thank God for leftovers. Our text today speaks 
of another kind of leftover. Leftover grace and mercy. A Canaanite woman asked Jesus to cure her demon possessed daughter. Jesus had just entered the neighborhood of Tyre and Sidon to get away from the relentless press of incredulous or disbelieving Jewish leaders. It was his attempt at a type of sabbatical, a rest for the weary. Along comes this Canaanite woman begging and pressing him so hard that the disciples tell Jesus to help her and send her away. That's when he reminds his disciples of his mission saying, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel and when the woman cries out Lord help me Jesus says something that seems almost insulting to the untrained ear he says it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dog Jesus had a dilemma. This woman was a Gentile, not a Jew. Jesus had been sent first to the lost house of Israel. He had come to offer God's chosen people the kingdom promised through the Davidic covenant centuries before. It would have been mission inappropriate for him to offer blessings to the Gentiles before he was able to complete his ministry to Israel. But notice that the woman was not insulted. She knew what Jesus meant. He was merely affirming what she already knew. That the Canaanite people were not faithful to God and not part of God's covenant uh, promise. Uh, I know there are more than a few mothers uh, in the house uh, who understand the mindset uh, of this tortured woman. Uh, her daughter uh, was sick, uh, demon uh, possessed, uh, and she believed this man Jesus to be the son of God the only one who could help her how do we know she called him Lord when Jesus says it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs she responds saying yes it is, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. All she wanted was some leftover grace and mercy from her master. She believed in her heart uh, that left over crumbs uh, of grace uh, and mercy uh, would be uh, enough. Uh, well, uh, does anybody here know uh, what Christ's crumbs uh, can do? Uh, on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, uh, do we even dare think in terms of crumbs. 
We live in a disposable world. The bountiful supply of leftovers in our refrigerators the day after Thanksgiving would be a welcome meal for 925 million people worldwide who don't have enough to eat. In the United States of America, the richest and most prosperous nation in human history, many American households did not have enough food to eat in 2020. But even the crumbs handed out by our government subsidized food pantries during this pandemic are more help than some families of foreign nations see in a lifetime. Oh, the last time I checked statistics, one out of four sub-Saharan Africans are malnourished, and that was before the pandemic. Well, if, like the Canaanite woman, all you could have were Christ crumbs, let's look at what you might expect to get. Well, first, Christ crumbs can satisfy hunger. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, Christ crumbs can satisfy hunger. Come on and put your hands together. Let those people know that you're in here. Oh, I know you're saying, uh, how can that be? Uh, crumbs uh, don't amount uh, to much. Uh, and if you're talking about crumbs uh, from your table, uh, you're right. Uh, but we're talking uh, about Christ's uh, table. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, when Elijah the Tishbite uh, went to the home uh, of the widow woman uh, in Zarephath, uh, he was hungry. Uh, the woman wanted to be a gracious host, uh, but she told Elijah, uh, as the Lord thy God liveth, uh, I have not a cake, uh, but a handful of meal uh, in a barrel uh, and a little oil uh, in a cruise. Uh, and uh, behold, uh, I'm gathering uh, two sticks uh, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Oh, you remember the story? Elijah told the woman, go ahead, make a cake for him first and the crumbs, with the crumbs rather, that she had and she obeyed. Uh, what was uh, the end uh, result uh, in the midst uh, of a great famine uh, the word of God says uh, the barrel of meal uh, wasted not uh, neither did the crews of oil uh, fail uh, according uh, to the word uh, of the Lord uh, which he spake uh, by uh, Elijah so you see, uh, when God uh, is in control, uh, even the crumbs uh, are enough. Uh, you're going to help me preach this, won't you? Uh, I know uh, there's someone in here uh, who can testify uh, about surviving uh, on crumbs. Uh, maybe you had to survive uh, on meager fare, uh, but you're still here. Uh, Hasn't it uh, been enough? Uh, say amen uh, if God uh, has brought you through. Well, uh, there are even more saints in this house uh, who will give a shout when I say uh, I have 
than young and now I am old yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread you may not have much but your confidence in Christ has not been shaken. You may not have much, but Christ is like a river that never runs dry. You may not have much, but Christ is a resource who can never be depleted. You may not have much, but Christ is your pearl of Not only that, uh, but secondly, uh, Christ crumbs uh, can redeem. Uh, turn around and look at somebody. Say, Christ crumbs can redeem. Uh, look at this Canaanite woman. Uh, first, uh, she brought to Jesus uh, the only thing uh, that she had, uh, her faith. Uh, yet uh, it uh, was enough uh, because her faith connected her to Christ. Uh, second, uh, she asked only uh, for the healing uh, of her daughter. Uh, she asked for nothing uh, for herself. Uh, has anybody here uh, ever had uh, a sick child? Uh, there's nothing you won't do and not a situation you won't face uh, to get your child uh, the healing uh, he or she needs. Uh, you don't care uh, if you have to knock down uh, a physician's door, uh, spend hours uh, on the phone uh, with the insurance company uh, and fill out papers uh, till your hands uh, are cramped uh, because uh, you feel uh, your child's sickness. Uh, you share your child's pain. Uh, we experience uh, our children's illness uh, right along uh, with them. Uh, so you shake off uh, what people may say uh, about your persistence uh, and you do uh, what you have to do uh, to get uh, the help. Uh, well, uh, this woman uh, was determined uh, to reach the one uh, who she believed uh, had the authority uh, to speak uh, to the wind uh, and the waves uh, and say, peace, uh, be uh, still. Uh, the one uh, who could heal uh, the sick, uh, make the blind uh, to see, uh, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. She needed the one who was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by whose stripes we are healed. This woman's faith uh, was so great uh, that Jesus stepped up his ministry, uh, put it uh, into high gear, uh, and healed uh, this Gentile's daughter uh, in uh, that very hour uh, without ever seeing her uh, or touching her. Uh, what a contrast uh, between this woman's faith uh, in her Redeemer and the Israel's rejection of their Redeemer. Israel had no time for Jesus. This woman made time for Jesus. Israel was running from Jesus. This woman was running to Jesus. Israel rejected Jesus. This woman believed wholeheartedly in Jesus. The disciples threw or they thought the Canaanite 
Canaanite woman was a mere Gentile who would be denied access to healing from their Messiah's table. But the psalmist David once sang, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup Oh, y'all don't want to have no church. My cup runneth over. And this Gentile woman believed in the Christ who prepares the table. When Christ prepares the table, even the crumbs are blessed. And you can be sure the crumbs will be enough to fight off any enemy. Arthritis, feed on Christ and your cup will run over. Cancer, feed on Christ and your cup will run over. Money's funny, feed on Christ and your cup will run over. Dark nights, feed on Christ and your cup will run over. Weary days, feed on Christ and your cup will run over. Let me pause here a minute to ask, is there anybody here? Who, uh, like the Israelites, uh, has been running Jesus uh, out of town. Uh, today uh, is a good day uh, to repent uh, and be uh, redeemed. Uh, do you have battles uh, that you uh, are fighting? Uh, do you have temptations uh, you uh, are resisting? Uh, do you have trials uh, you are not enduring? Do you have burdens that you are bearing? It's never too late to call on your Redeemer. Come on to Jesus. Even his crumbs are greater than your worst crises. Well, now. I got to let you go now. But finally, uh, Christ crumbs uh, offer uh, eternal life. Uh, turn around and wave at your neighbor. Uh, say, Christ crumbs offer eternal life. Uh, come on and put your blessed hands together. We're going home in a minute. The Canaanite woman uh, may not have even known it. But her faith in Christ uh, solidified uh, her eternal future. Uh, what she thought was a mission uh, for her daughter uh, turned out to be a mission uh, for herself too. Uh, if she believed in Christ before her daughter was healed, uh, she certainly believed in him after her daughter's healing. Jesus would not have helped her if her faith uh, was flawed. Uh, I'd like to think uh, she was one of the women uh, who pressed her way to the cross uh, to mourn uh, his suffering. Uh, after all, uh, she owed him uh, so much. Uh, but let me give you some absolute proof uh, that even Christ crumbs uh, can guarantee you uh, eternal life. Uh, in Luke chapter 16, uh, Jesus tells the story uh, of a rich man uh, and a beggar. Uh, in no other story uh, does Jesus mention anyone uh, by name. 
So you can be sure this story is no parable. It's a true account of the grace and mercy of the Lord. In this story, the rich man was robed in the purple and linen of royalty. Lazarus was robed in rags. The rich man had servants while Lazarus had only dogs to lick his wounds. The rich man feasted while Lazarus begged for crumbs. The rich man died and went to hell, but Lazarus died and went, wait for it, to heaven. Apparently, the crumbs were enough. You can survive on crumbs down here. If they fall from Christ prepared table. What Christ provides will sustain. And when you get to heaven, Jesus told John to write on the aisle of Patmos, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. There may be meager meals down here, but there won't be up there. There may be struggles down here, but there won't be up there. There may be pain and sorrow down here, but there won't be up there. Christ crumbs can satisfy hunger. Christ crumbs can redeem. Christ crumbs can grant you eternal life. But here's more good news. You don't have to live on crumbs. No, you don't. You don't have to live on crumbs. My brothers and sisters, you are not a discarded leftover. You are a disciple. You are not surplus. You are a servant of the Most High God. You are not a remnant. You are royalty. And your elder brother is the king. The Canaanite woman was treated as though she was a leftover because the Jews, the church folks of Jesus' day determined they were too good for her and she was not good enough for them. Like the Thanksgiving leftovers you will soon have. She lived alone in the back of the religious refrigerator untouched and destined to spoil but despite her leftover status she called on Jesus anyway this leftover woman was willing to come to Christ's table like a lowly dog because he was her master. She thought I may be leftovers in the eyes of some, but I know that I am never a leftover in the eyes of God. Well, my grandmother could do amazing things with leftovers every time I would stop by for a visit. I would never see much in her refrigerator. But she would tell me, go sit down. And I'd hear her clanging pots, cutting and chopping. And within a short time, I'd be 
be sitting at a table with food fit for a king and a queen. If my grandmother could do this with a little bit of leftover food, imagine what Jesus can do with just a little bit of leftover faith. Faith, the size of a mustard seed. The Canaanite woman was put down, but she still had leftover faith. She was defined, then disregarded, and denied. But she redefined herself from Canaanite to Canine. So she could sup with the Savior. Jesus answered her prayer. He stepped into her situation and he healed her daughter. Jesus will step into your situation soon. All you have to do is seek him and believe in him. Christ can handle your deep-seated sorrow. Christ can handle your long-lasting trials. Christ can handle your bending burdens. Christ can handle your heartbreaking traumas. Christ can handle your crushing crisis. He'll give you a seat at the king's table. He'll give you a seat at Surrender all to Him. I 
Sign at churchontherockbaptist.com. Send me a note. Let me know that you made that decision and we'll pray for you wherever you are. And if we're able, we'll help you find a good, strong Christian church where you can grow in Jesus. Well, it's offering time now here at Church on the Rock, and we've made it so easy for you to be able to share a gift with us through your financial apps. On your phones, Zell Pay, Cash App, PayPal. All you have to do when it asks for information is enter our telephone number, area code 408 532 7625. We're also on Givelify app. You can search for Church on the Rock Baptist. You'll see a picture of the sanctuary. You can go to our website and hit the giving button. And you can follow the instructions there. You can even write us today at Church on the Rock. Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. And for those of you on Facebook Live, at the top of the screen, there is an app button. You can hit it. It'll take you to PayPal. But won't you share in this Thanksgiving season? Won't you be liberal in your giving and help us to be able to continue to come to you wherever you are and maintain our presence in this part of God's vineyard in Silicon Valley. Thank you for what you're about to do and may God give it back to you in ways you cannot even imagine. Well, until next time, same place, same time, join us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ and pray for us, knowing that we're praying for you. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.